Jackie Breyer spoke to me from New York about the Hong Kong Toy Fair. She is editorial director of the Toy Book. And I asked her what was behind the heightened interest in the Toy Fair this year. You know, I think we can attribute the increase in attendance, at least partially due to the shutdown of Toys R Us. Um, a lot of manufacturers are looking for new retailers to distribute their product, and a lot of retailers are looking to get a piece of that Toys R Us um, dollars that are on the table. So we're seeing on both sides people eager to make new partnerships. What will be the big trend in toys in 2019? 2,000 exhibitors <laughs> at this fair. Which toys stood out most at the Hong Kong Fair? I would say that we are still going to see a number of toys, a large number of toys, fitting into that collectible category, that unboxing, surprise reveal category. As manufacturers found such great success with it in 2018, we're still seeing a lot of that for 2019. And we're also seeing some advances in technology um, going into 2019, some new improved products and also some very new cool technology. I tell you what, I have an eight-year-old daughter, and she loves all the collectible, the tiny toys, and yep. the surprises. Um, and I want her to stay that way because <laughs> electronics are also big. Do you think electronics and screens are taking over the toy industry? Are smart devices more popular now over traditional toys like stuffed animals and dolls and those sort of things? I do think where kids were, you know, when I was a kid, um, we were watching a lot of TV and video games were being introduced. And now kids continue to play video games and now they have tablets and smart devices. But I do think a lot of parents are trying to limit time there and still keep a balanced toy box for their kids where they're playing with blocks and dolls and, and building things and using cr creative play and imaginative play. And STEM is also a big area continues to be, so science, technology, engineering, and math toys continue to grow as a category. By late 2021, China is on track to be the world's number one toy consumer. What is your outlook for the industry, especially in terms of marketing, advertising? Um, do you see companies changing focus, perhaps from the west to the east? I think that the U.S. toy market will continue to be um, among the top markets for toys, but I do see that happening as well. I do expect that China and Asia will continue to grow in terms of numbers of toys purchased by consumers. And what seems to be most popular in certain areas of the world? I mean, is it safe to assume or not that a certain product, product or toy for um, a seven to eight year old is just as popular on the other side of the world? There's definitely the opportunity for that. Um, kids are kids no matter where they are. I think sometimes that can be limited by the types of entertainment and where licensing agreements can be global, um, where Mattel recently signed uh, a big global deal with BTS, the Korean band, and it's going to be, it's, it's already as huge in the U.S. as it is around the world. So it really depends on, you know, the trends that catch on and with um, things like YouTube and the devices we were talking about, kids are, you know, trends are passing around the world much more quickly these days, and um, that's, that's what's spurring trends that, that do travel very quickly around the world.